Gentlemen, Antonio here. Quick question for you. How many times a day do you think you're being lied to? The answer, I'll reveal it a little bit later in the video, but this is based off of research coming out of USC, a guy named Dr. Gerald Jellison, quite the name, huh? But he recently released some information on this and I was astounded how many times I'm being lied to on a daily basis. Of course, this is gonna change. Many of you guys that deal with a lot of people, interact with a lot of people, it probably could be higher. For those of us that don't get out much, could be quite a bit lower. But the point is, on a daily basis, you're being lied to. In this video, I'm gonna give you three tips to better and more accurately tell if somebody is lying to you. Most of the time, we got about a 50-50 chance of being able to determine. It's basically the flip of a coin. Is this person lying to me or not? With these three tips, gentlemen, you're gonna be able to, I would say, increase that up to about 90%. And if you want more information, like always, I've got an article right here that's gonna go into a lot more detail. In that article, I'm gonna actually give you a number of references. And again, we're gonna give you a lot more detail so you can start to apply this in your life. Step number one, to be able to tell if somebody is lying to you. First, you want to establish a baseline. What do I mean by a baseline? A baseline is just simply how the person normally reacts when they are just in normal conversation. And you also want to have a baseline for when they get excited. First, you want to observe the person, observe their physical reaction, just in normal conversation. Look at their face, Look at their head, the way it moves. Look at their torso, the direction it faces. Look at their feet, what direction are their feet facing. Just look at over all their body movements. When they normally talk, like me, do you, they use your hands, you know, quite a bit. Uh, when they're, you know, do they nod with the conversation when they're agreeing with you? Be observant, pay attention to that body language, and all of a sudden, you have an idea of how this person is going to normally react. In addition, pay attention to their tone, to the way their voice is. Do they use crutch words? Um, ah, you know, like. You've heard them before. You know this. Basically, you are creating this baseline. Then ask the person a question, maybe that's going to incite a bit of emotion. Talk to them about their favorite sports team. Talk to them about politics. Now pay attention. How do things change? You're going to have to, you know, this is someone that you're probably going to engage with a bit. Maybe practice on a good friend. Maybe let them know that, hey, you're, you know, it's almost one of those things you got to be careful about who you're practicing on. At the same time, you don't want to tell them that you're observing this stuff. I practiced on my wife and I'm still married to her. So, hey, here we go. So, this is something that may take a few hours to be able to pick up. You're going to probably want to take notes. Again, I go into more detail in the article how to actually go about doing this. But the key is you've collected this information you have a place to start. Now let's go on to part two. So step two here is to be able to spot differences from the baseline and also be able to identify clusters. So let's talk about differences. Basically, you have the baseline. You know that when the person normally speaks to you, they face you, they use their hands, they look at you, they nod. You've got all this stuff. So whenever you start to speak with them, look for why do they all of a sudden start to not do that? What did you say? What questions did you ask them that all of a sudden, maybe they turn away? Maybe the direction of their feet, they actually, why do they cross their arms? Why do they start to touch points on their body? It's not a single one of these that's going to give away whether or not they're lying or they're hiding something. It's usually going to be a cluster of these differences. And what do I mean by cluster? I mean that basically we're seeing two to three of these in conjunction. That's why it's important with your baseline that you actually do this very well. Because if you don't have a great baseline, you're not going to be able to accurately identify these clusters. So some of the common indicators that someone could be lying to you are going to be a mismatch of the face emotions and actually what they're saying. Now, again, I'm gonna, my wife, someone that uh, occasionally I will ask, hey, hon, do you mind if I'm gonna work late tonight? She will say no, but the look on her face does not mean, you know, it, 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 I can tell that she is, in a sense, probably lying to me. She, you know, it's a white lie, it's a very small lie, but she, she wants to be a trooper. She wants to support me running my business. At the same time, she's like thinking, hey, you need to be at home with the kids. That is a perfect indicator in my case. Other ones you wanna look for, nodding, moving the head that disagrees with what they're actually saying. Are they nodding no when they're saying yes? Now, this doesn't apply to everyone. Anyone that's Bulgarian or has been to Bulgaria probably knows what I'm talking about and you guys can fill them in in the comments if you haven't been over there, but it all that is cultural dependent. Uh, you also want to be, you know, looking for little things like are they touching their nose? 
Are they touching their ears? Are they touching their face? Look at for where their hands, and again, it is something different than the baseline. Do they engage in grooming or self-soothing behaviors? It could be something that, you know, a woman, she starts to touch her hair. It could be a man that he starts to play with his nails. These are things that often we are trying to reassure ourselves because we're not necessarily sure about what we're saying. Look for asymmetrical movements. This is so naturally, if you're not sure about something, you may shrug both shoulders like that. But if someone just shrugs one, they're thinking about it. And so that's why asymmetrical movements can sometimes be a giveaway. Finally, listen for paused responses. If they normally have a pause, again, that was part of the baseline. But if they're normally pretty quick, but for some reason, whenever they start to pause, they're throwing in a lot of crutch words, we could have a red flag here. Finally, let's get into part three. This is where you dig deeper. So you've spotted some possible clusters that vary from the baseline. Now you need to ask this question, does it really matter? I'm gonna, okay, so 200 times a day. That's how many on average they discovered at USC that you are being lied to. So a lot of these are just simple lies. You're gonna have to pick and choose your battles. If it's someone emotionally that you're very close with, a loved one, your partner, Come on, do you, you know, white lies happen all the time and you got to pick and choose your battles. If you choose to go down this route, three things you want to go ahead and try to do to trip them up to really be able to tell and to dig deeper. First one, ask open-ended questions. So they're telling you, you know, where they were, they're trying to, you know, they were they even got a, maybe a good story, maybe ask open-ended questions to go into their story. Oftentimes when someone memorizes a false story, they memorize it in order. So the part two thing that you can do is ask them to start in the middle of their story. Oh, they got delayed during lunch and that's why they're 30 minutes late. You know, well, what happened? Part three of this is to ask an unexpected question. So this is where somebody may say, oh, well, I ate lunch and then I went off and this, and you may say, hey, well, wait a minute, what'd you have for lunch? Or did you get a red apple or a green apple? And all of a sudden it's like, that may throw them for a loop. And again, at this point, you're just digging deeper. You're looking more for signs. Like I said, you cannot tell 100% of the time. At the end of the day, gentlemen, if you can use this to make better decisions, you're in a business deal and you're looking across the table and you notice on point number four, those guys, you know, something is going on here. You think you want to go deeper because you're about to like sign this big deal and they are for some reason very uneasy about this point. You want to be able to identify that. That's when it really matters. All right, guys, if you want to learn more, again, go check out the article. In addition, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, scientifically based information about image, about presentation, go check out my personal image system. We're about to launch it again. It is something that we put out every single month. I bring in a class of gentlemen. We focus not only on clothing, but we focus in on personal skills, on etiquette, on presentation, on body language. These are the type of things which you can use to be the best you guys. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.